So I'm going to go ahead and start over. I think you should be able to hear me now. Can you guys hear me? Let me know in the comments before I keep going. Yay! Heard. Sweet. Awesome. Okay, let me start over. We're starting over. Wiping the slate clean. What's up, everybody? Rissa Vibes here, aka Readings by Rissa. Super excited to connect with you as always. Today is another Sunday, and we are here for a brand new weekly reading. And I was just going into a whole rant about the moon and a review of last week. So let me start that again since the volume was off. And really what I wanted to talk about mainly was the fact that we had the Pisces new moon last week, or I'm sorry, last night. And that energy was really allowing us to feel deeply. And so we're going to feel this moon continually for the next few days. And so I want to remind you all is if you're feeling deep in emotion, if you're feeling a lot of empathic energy, Energy. We're going to talk about that in this reading. I also put out a weekly reading last week that had a lot of detail about the new moon in Pisces so that you can review that as well and maybe reflect on how things have shifted since you're maybe experiencing more of that new moon energy now. And then also I posted on my Instagram at readings by Rissa, a really detailed conscious conversation with my love Chad all about the new moon in Pisces as well. So that will also give you a little bit more of an introspection perspective and community perspective on the energy of the moon also, okay? So lots of things to tap into for resources on how to navigate this new moon in Pisces we just had last night because it is a very, very deep energy. Um, is it up enough? Because I didn't touch the volume. So let me know if the volume is up enough. I'm turning it up a little bit more. Is that better? Let me know, you guys. Comment for me. I think the mic got a little bit like messed with when I was setting it up. So definitely let me know if the volume's good. All right. So I want to also talk about the review of last week's cards because those were important just to feel into where we're starting off from for this week. And so last week I pulled the transformation card at the beginning of the week. The transformation card was all about moving through change and starting to create more space and make more space for transformation and positive progress forward, okay? Then in the middle of the week, I pulled the abundance card, okay? And the abundance card last week was really letting us know that we are starting to open up more space for abundance as we allow the changes that are already setting forth in our life and in our world. So there is abundance on the other side of these changes that are shifting in our lives. Then at the end of the week, I pulled the guardian angel card, and this card allowed us to remember that we have so much support from unseen worlds. We are here in this connection, in this awareness, and we sometimes forget that we have our passed on loved ones, our ancestors, our guardian angels there to support us through change through deep emotion and through all of the waves of that, okay? So make sure that you're also tapping into the energy of that card since that was the end of the week card from last week, calling on your guides, calling on your guardian angels when you need support. And then the new moon card that I pulled last week was the lantern card. And the lantern card is all about illuminating reality, illuminating through darkness, anything that is hard to see or not clear or confusing. And this is really an energy of being the light through anything that seems a little bit uncomfortable or deep or dark or heavy, okay? So reminding yourself that you always have access to the light and you are the light and you can gain clarity by acknowledging that light within you and continually pouring into it, okay? All right, before I continue, please let me know how the volume is, everybody. I want to make sure it is doing well and at the right level before I continue because we are going to dive right into these weekly messages, okay? So give me a little, a little comment. Let me know how the volume is. And as you do, take a few deep breaths as well as we wait for a response on the volume just to allow yourself to relax and get ready for these messages of this week. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got a lot to cover. And this week we are going to really prepare for a beautiful energy for the spring equinox next week. And so this week is all about preparation of that. We are good with volume. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
Super good that you all can hear me. What's up, Nico? What's up, Renika? What's up, Candice? What's up, Ruby? What's up, Nikki? What's up, Amanda? Super excited to see all of you. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in to this week's messages. All right, so these messages are the messages that I get from tapping into the Mass Collective through my intuitive work, through my um, meditations, through the downloads I get from my guides, and also from the patterns that I see in the readings that I do. So this is a really powerful summary of what to expect this week. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, the first message that I was getting for this week is this understanding of the difference and the similarities between patience and procrastination. I know for me, a lesson in patience has been really strong this week, and I'm also seeing that other people are having lessons in patience as well and in procrastination, and that as I was kind of reflecting on this, my guides were really showing me this awareness of similarity and duality. There's this paradox there as well. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about paradoxes later, but this energy of patience and procrastination. Procrastination is essentially this uh, over patience, this overwhelming patience where you're so patient to start something that you actually never start it until it's way too late or you have barely any time, right? And the energy of, and that creates a negative kind of connotation sometimes, or, um, you know, some tension, some chaos, some confusion, some feeling of being rushed or tense. And so this energy can sometimes be a little bit more um, complex and difficult to move through the energy of procrastination. But there is this energy of patience that's still there. It's just an overabundant version of patience, right? Now, when we think about patience, some of us may think about how difficult it is to have patience, or maybe you think about you know, how other people in your life, you wish they had more patience, right? This energy of, of needing more patience. So we have to understand that when we want patience and when we notice that that's a lesson for ourselves, we need to recognize where we are having an overabundance of patience in our life. Maybe we wait really, really a long time to make a decision that we know we're meant to make, right? This is a procrastination energy. Maybe we're delaying the inevitable through a healing that we know we need to do or a facing of trauma that we know we need to do to uh, rise into healing or rise into our highest power or maybe facing the things that we've said to someone that hurt them so that we can forgive ourselves and they can forgive us. These energies are the places where we can cultivate patience. We can start to stop. Um, we can stop kind of procrastinating on the things that we know we need to do that we've been overly patient in doing. And we can put that patience in the things that we actually need patience for things like divine timing in our manifestations, things like, you know, waiting for the right time to act on something that, you know, is just starting to click into place um, patience and hearing the messages and the synchronicities and the deep guidance that you need to answer something that you've been feeling conflicted on. This is the patience that we need in most of our lives. And we think that we don't have it, but we actually do have that patience. We're just, it's in a different place. It's in a place where we're procrastinating on things. So when we shift procrastination into, you know, direct action and aligned action and present moment focus, we then start to have more patience for other things. We start to feel that energy flowing into the areas that we need it for. Does this make sense? So it's an energy of balancing um, between procrastination and patience and starting to create more aligned patience rather than out of alignment procrastination. Okay. So this is a big one and they go hand in hand. So recognize your relationship with patience and your relationship with procrastination this week and throughout the rest of the year, because this week and this month is all about kickstarting us into our goals, kickstarting us into our, you know, forward momentum into the next level of our growth. And we have to be really aware of where we're procrastinating on things that are going to help us level up and where we need to have patience on things that are going to help us level up. Okay. And finding the balance. Now let's get into leveling up because this is a big one. 
Leveling up is the theme for this week. I feel it so deeply that Pisces new moon last night really activated more of our um, drive to be the best we can be, to um, be successful, to be, um, you know, all that we want to be in this world. And it also activated the deep emotions that are either in the way of that or are helping fuel that, okay, or both. So that's where all these emotional waves are coming from. This is where all of the, the spectrum of energy that we're feeling is coming from, okay? So this is our level up moment. This is where we take quantum leaps, as my dear sis Candy talks about. And this energy of quantum leap forward is this ability to make decisions that are going to take you to the next level and dedicating yourself to certain disciplines that are going to take you to the next level unrelentlessly. Chad and I talked about this last night in the new moon talk on my Instagram at readings by Rissa. So also make sure you check that out because the energy of this is huge. We have to be able to put the work in. We also have to recognize that in making these quantum leaps, we have to be so dedicated, so embodied, so completely immersed in this new energy of discipline, willpower, drive, motivation, stepping into that version of yourself that is who you want to be, whatever it means for you, whatever that quantum leap looks like for you, you've got to step into it with this just unwavering dedication and commitment, okay? And this is your quantum leap forward. This is our level up. And if we do it halfway, or if we do it in a small way, we're going to get a small or halfway result. Okay. So ask yourself, do I want the full result? And am I willing to put all of the energy in? Am I willing to put full amount of my effort, dedication, faith, trust, energy into it? Because that's how you're going to get back that full energy in return. And we're in the spring forward, okay? We just had the daylight savings. So we, uh, over here in the central time that I'm in now, we just um, spring ahead an hour. And so we're feeling this energy of kind of creating this like, um, new momentum, this getting on a new track that's on a different speed. It's kind of faster. It's quicker. It's more sprung forward and sprung ahead. And we're a little bit, you know, not used to it. We're having to adapt to that. We're having to kind of line up our tracks to that new path, that new energy. And so it may feel a little awkward to be in a new gear, to kick things up a notch, but still stick with it because this is what's going to get you used to it. This is what's going to get you in alignment with that new track. And this is what's going to keep you in that momentum to stay in that po positive progression. So notice how you're getting kicked into gear and also have a little bit of a sense of surrender. We talked about this last night as well to what the universe is bringing you. Um, you know, stay hyper focused on your goals, your drive, your discipline, the choices you need to make consistently to keep you in that vibration, but also make sure that you're surrendering to what the universe is showing you about all of those things to help you fine tune those decisions, those environments, those interactions, the ways in which you're living your life. Okay. This is going to be your way of communicating with the universe on how you're moving on to this new path. So if you get too focused on something and you're not paying attention to the signs or the natural flow that the universe is bringing you to show you what's working and what's not, you're going to miss a lot of the important information. So don't let yourself get caught up in missing information just because you're hyper um, focused on a certain discipline that you've decided, but maybe the universe hasn't fully decided. So let yourself be a little experimental, a little adventurous, a little bit more in flow uh, and intuitive with this process as well. All right. The next message is work life, work life. Okay. Work life is a big one that my guides were speaking about this week. Um, in my meditation this morning, they were talking about how choices are being made in our work life that may feel a little bit difficult to make, but are definitely necessary to help us activate more freedom, whether it's um, leaving our job or simply moving to a different position or choosing to have a new plan of action for the next year or two years or five years of our job or career path or starting to introduce um, more space for you to have more creative 
leeway or more leadership or more say in the company, whatever freedom means for you in your work life, there are certain decisions that you're going to have the opportunity to make this week that's going to help you move into more of that freedom. And it may be a little dif be difficult to make those decisions, but it will be necessary because that that decision making is going to shift you into more of that freedom path. Okay. We talked a few weeks ago, maybe even a few months ago now about etching our path to freedom. And this is where it's coming back for full circle. And we're starting to see the opportunities show up that help us step into that freedom. So this can be a really amazing experience. It can also feel a little bit conflicting. It can feel a little bit nerve wracking and scary, and it can also feel a little overwhelming. So take time to journey about what you're feeling. Take time to really write down what you want and notice how the decisions you're making and the actions you're taking are lining up to what you want or not. And help that should help you make your decisions a little bit more effectively. Okay. Let me know if this is helping. I'm sorry. I have this like weird thing on my computer. Okay, cool. Oh, hi, Marie. Good to see you. Super excited. You all are resonating with this. Okay, perfect. So let's keep going. Now, the next message is about love, your love life. Okay. Also getting a big one on this. I know we pulled the new love card a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And I think we even had a romantic card um, come up in some of the readings I was doing over the week for a lot of people. And so there's this energy of romance and new love in the air. And there also is this energy of recognizing where we are maybe a little bit um, over, uh, how would you say it? Like, I guess, overzealous in our love in certain areas, um, recognizing that we may have these rose colored glasses in our love life that maybe is causing us to not see things for what they really are. And so this is a Pisces energy and a Neptune energy with a Venus and Neptune conjunction in Pisces new moon last night. And we're continuing that conjunction throughout the week. And so this energy is going to continue to evolve and develop. And it really is just letting us know that if we're feeling a lot of love or pleasure or seeing a lot of beauty in something, that is fantastic. We definitely want to enjoy that. We want to let our imagination be fruitful in that. But we also don't want to be so imaginative and so overzealous in that love and beauty eyesight, insight, that we create an illusion or that we kind of miss out on what is, what else is there, you know, the spectrum of energy there. So um, just pay attention to everything involved in the romantic interactions you're having and everything involved in what you're finding pleasurable or beautiful and make sure that there's not any shadow parts of that that you're ignoring. And reflect back on, on yourself for connecting to more of that energy of love. So when you're feeling a little bit overzealous in the love of looking at things outside of you, start to direct and reflect some of that love, loving insight onto yourself. How can you look at yourself with more loving eyes? How can you see yourself in that same beauty? How can you acknowledge more of that in your own energy to allow for an equal energy exchange of both the external appreciation and the internal appreciation of love, beauty, and pleasure, okay? Really, really important on that. So don't get caught up in the illusions. And if you're feeling like this is resonating, it's probably because this is a message for you. So pay attention to it, journal about it. And it's not to say, you know, don't love, don't get excited, don't be involved in the experience. It's just saying, you know, don't be only focusing on one part. Make sure you're seeing everything in its entirety so that you know all of the information that you need to know to continue moving on in a successful way. All right, the next message is about spiritual depths. And this is also a very big integration energy from the Pisces new moon last night. So all of these are really helping us to integrate that energy we activated last night in the Pisces new moon. And spiritual depths is a big one, okay? So this is an energy of continuation and consistency in synchronicities, signs, um, deep gratitude, joy, alignment, bliss, and deep connection to spirit 
into the universe, into our intuition, our higher self and our spirit guides. Okay. So we're going to be feeling continued, deep, exciting, and beautiful emotions. It's so hard to describe the energy of feeling so deeply connected to source. I know for me, I usually just cry and joy and gratitude and meditation when that energy sweeps over me. And it's just impossible to describe. And this is the spiritual depth and connection that we are going to start to feel and activate more of. So notice how you're feeling that in your own life. And if you notice yourself crying over sentiment or gratitude or just deep connection to the universe, then let yourself enjoy that. That's beautiful. Let yourself really experience that energy and um, notice what else can come through as you experience that connection. Maybe that's a good time for you to ask your guides a question or to remind yourself of a manifestation you're working on or to use some of that energy to activate because this is the empath's magic, okay? The empath's magic is the ability to feel the depth of emotion that they need to feel to create reality and to shift reality and to find harmony where they need to. Without our emotions, we don't know what other emotions we need to balance ourselves out. Without being aware of the energy around us through our emotional body, it's hard for us to tell what is good for us and what is not good for us in our environment. So this is the empath's magic. And without that depth of, of connection to creativity and connection to our manifestation power and our intuition and source as a co-creator of it, we can't really actually magnetize and materialize the manifestations that we are working on because we need that energy of the emotion to attract it and to activate it. Okay. So this is an energy of intense strength and depth and we want to enjoy it. So we are stepping into a lot of manifestation power this week with the spring equinox on its way next week. We are having a lot of energy involved in this power of three with the month of March and all the three energies that we're experiencing. So I'll talk about that in a second. And all of this is helping us to take the steps and to complete the process of manifestation, rebirth, rejuvenation, ascension, and all of the above. Okay. So, so good. Yes. Okay. So this is why it's so important, especially with the new moon that we just had last night. And like I said, no big deal. If you haven't done your rituals yet, you still have a few days to do your rituals from the moon. That energy is going to be potent for the next three days. And this is an important time for you to ask yourself, what do I need right now? And what do I want? Because everything that we need and we want are coming at us at full speed. And we are experiencing so many opportunities that are activating our needs and wants. And it can be a lot, especially when it's coming all at once. But if we can start to write down in priority what we need and want, we can start to focus on making those steps first towards the opportunities that have already presented themselves in those areas, okay? So ask for what you need and for what you want. The manifestation energy is big and pay attention to the priorities of your needs and wants to help you decipher what thing to move towards first if you're feeling it all happening at once. And be sure to ask, like I just said, be, be sure to ask. There's big manifestation energy. And when you ask, Feel the emotion, activate the feeling of emotion of what it would feel like, what your senses would feel like if you were to acquire that manifestation, if you were to materialize it right here, right now. And sometimes that can produce uh, deep emotion. It can make you cry. It can make you laugh. It can make you smile. It can make you, um, you know, shout in excitement. Okay. This is how deeply you want to feel it because that's what's causing the magnetism. Okay. All right. Last spirit message of this week before we tap into some astrology and pull some cards. Last message is our star seed serious energy. The serious star system is really, really strong for us star seeds out there and cosmic 
guidance and connection. If you are a starseed and if you are into starseed stuff, I have now shifted all of my starseed Saturday meditations over to OnlyFans. I just posted this week's starseed meditation yesterday on my OnlyFans page. So you can definitely go check that out, connect to the Sirius star system because they brought forth epic energy for mental transformation, shifting our perspectives, shifting our thought process, shifting our insight to align to our abundance and our positive movement forward, allowing us to really uh, graduate as initiates and star seeds on earth who are ready to shine their light and activate their purest positive potential. And so this energy is super powerful. And the Syrians are there to help guide us through it this week. So if you're interested in activating that meditation, there's also a few more messages in that reading from yesterday on my OnlyFans that you can dive into. And if you just sub sub uh, if you subscribe to my OnlyFans, you'll also be able to ask for little mini readings on the starseed energy or just additional clarity on certain things for um, donation. So really, really cool little way to energetically exchange service for all of those who want a little bit more connection to the messages. All right. And the last thing I want to say about that is that there is an energy of paradox with the cosmic connections this week. So we want to pay attention to any ways we're self-contradicting and the well, anyways, we're contradicting ourselves and really kind of getting used to this checking ourselves whenever we say something that really isn't true to us or whenever we do something that really isn't true to our goals or whenever we embody something that isn't really aligned to what we know we are. And so this self-contradictory behavior, we have to check ourselves on. And this is a big one this week as well. I go a little bit more into that in the Star Seed Saturday meditation on my OnlyFans. So check that out. All right, y'all. I'm also posting some really cute, sexy nature pics from my trip in Sedona last weekend on my OnlyFans because your girl was just soaking up the sun, sunbathing, skinny dipping, chilling in the creek, hanging out with my girls, my goddesses, and nature. It was amazing. So I'm going to be posting all the dope pictures of me on there on my OnlyFans as well for any of you who want a little nature eye candy. You know what I'm saying? All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into our astrology of the week. And this is going to be a really quick review. We already talked about the new moon in Pisces last night. It was the empaths moon is what I'm calling it. So really activating the empaths magic that we talked about today and also having us really hold space for the empaths and having the empaths make sure that they do a lot of cleansing work on their aura, release any energy that is not your own with the mantra that I gave you last week in the weekly reading and in the moon talk I did last night. So check those things if you want the mantra. But this energy is really just calling us to allow the emotions that they are there to help be the tools that they are for our magic and for our manifestation. Then we have Ceres conjunct Chiron and Aries this week as well, which is really helping us notice the cycles and seasons of our transformation and inviting in new healing in a passionate and motivated way. Then on the 14th, which is today, I really want to talk about the fact that we're entering this three power energy, this power of three energy. So we've got March, which is the third month, then 14, which is such an energy of you know four and one, which is five, this activation of positive transformation forward. We've got this energy of even the four minus one being a three. We also have, um, you know, just this connection to um, our ascension. So when you break down the number 14, you activate this alignment, which is the number one. And then the four helps us through contrast, challenge, contradiction, confliction, um, contrast any way that we're facing it. So this is helping us to move through the energy of three into the 21 energy into, you know, this energy of another three, two and one and, um, harmony, harmony amongst it all. Okay. So we're also going to notice that next week and this week we have the power of three showing up in the number seven. So this week 
we're seeing the seven and two and three with 14 and 21. And then next week we're seeing the seven and three times with 21 as the 21st on Sunday and 21 on the end of the year date. Okay. So 2021. So this energy of three is really powerful. My guides are saying that we can use this to our advantage, that we can call on the number of three for our trust, our faith, our harmony, our ability to connect to our mind, body, soul alignment in order to also manifest through, you know, death, life, and rebirth, um, this energy of connection to the Holy Trinity, you know, masculine, feminine, and the inner child. So there's just a lot of three energies here that we want to pay attention to. And they're all spiritual because we have that seven also so connected to it with the 14 and the 21. Okay. So just noticing how seven also represents spiritual activation and growth and ascension. So all of these numbers showing up. We also have that 5, 2021, which is a five-year positive progression forward. So just more and more ways to talk about this. I could literally talk about the number synchronicities all day because they just keep going on and on. So pay attention to the number synchronicities that pop up in your life. They're telling you something as well. And let those signs and synchronicities lead you where you're being called in all of the things that help you activate your magic and your freedom. Now, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one activation of your magic and freedom coaching and mentorship by me, I do have a brand new set of program options for my intuitive luminary coaching program and course. I have a really exciting option I just drafted up that is going to be super powerful and I am enrolling for April to September, possibly May to October, depending on how I want to unveil it, but enrolling for the next um, six months. And this is an energy of, and I'm sorry, let me reiterate this. I'm enrolling now in the next three weeks for the term of this, the six month term. So cut off for enrollment will end in the next month or so. So definitely if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, reach out to me. There is a description in this video that will allow you to schedule your one-on-one -on -one free consultation call for 45 minutes. And the new program option that I'm unveiling is a master manifestation group program. Okay. This is going to be huge. This is where we're going to invite community and we're going to create a really powerful mastermind group for manifestation in a big way. We're going to utilize tools together. We're also going to tap into our intuitive development together, and we're going to be able to see how our manifestations are progressing forward as a group and help each other progress them forward together. And you're also going to get one-on-one -on -one stuff with me as well. And the full course that I have have developed for your intuitive development and spiritual enlightenment. So if you're interested in that, definitely click the link that I'll put in the description so that you can schedule your one-on-one -on -one consultation call and we can talk about the program options. I also have a one-on-one -on -one personal path option aside from the group. So there's a lot of opportunity for that as well. If you want more private one-on-one -on -one time with me as a mentor and coach, and you still want to get that amazing intuitive development course and program. So if you're interested in that, this is the time. This is the time to invest in yourself, invest in your magic, invest in your self-care, your self-love, your soul purpose, and discovering all that you are meant to bring to this world, okay? There is no time like the present and the world needs you. The world needs more luminaries stepping into their power. I was really excited today because I woke up this morning and I had a text message from one of my luminary graduates from last year, and she's been doing her epic wood burning art that has been just so successful. And she stepped into a complete path for herself where she's now able to create custom art for people all over the world. And before she, she didn't know how to, you know, start this business on her own. She didn't know how to really feel confident and step forward into that energy and now she is so shout out to you kayla i'm super proud of you and shout out to all of you who have been in the program nikki as well stepping into her meditation work and guidance programs and ways in which she's going to be leading in that way and Lindsay manifesting more energy as a mother and a parent and building her family i mean it's just beautiful how many clients i'm seeing step into their power step into their path step into their passion
questions. So you can do it too. And it is all about choosing yourself. So if you're ready, definitely click the link that I'll put in the description for you to sign up for a free consultation. All right, let's go ahead and pull some cards to end out our reading for this week, this week, the 14th of March to the 21st of March, activating that seven energy, that three energy, that five energy, so many numbers. Let's see what the beginning of the week says. Well, let's do the middle of the week with the spirit messages deck. And how are all of you feeling? How are you all resonating with the messages from this week? And thank you all as well for your patience with the audio in the beginning of the reading. Like I said, I'm still getting used to setting up these readings by myself. But shout out to Nico, who I'm so used to doing this for me. And it's so, it's so hard to not have him here sometimes, but I'm getting it. I'm getting it. The microphone thing was a, a, a slight hiccup. No big deal. But I did set this up all by myself today. I think it looks pretty nice. I think I could maybe use like a little more light. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So let's see what we have. Oh my goodness. Wow. We have been talking all about this energy. So the first card is the tower card, the tower card. Okay. And what is the tower card? The tower card represents epic change. And this is an energy of kind of things crumbling, things falling apart, things being a little bit chaotic confusing, contrasting, and burning, right? This tower burning ablaze, crumbling down, all the things that we thought we were building on are starting to show different things that we need to see. Um, you know, just noticing how we're transforming from different goals that we had before. And the tower is letting us know that, yeah, sometimes these things have to crumble. They have to be rearranged. They have to be, you know, um, broken down. But it's not for the purpose of attacking you or creating death or creating um, complete permanent ending. It's in, for the process of rebirth, for the process of rebuilding, for the process of reactivating new insight and new energy. And so that's in the beginning of the week. We're going to notice some of the tower energy that's hitting us, and it's going to feel a little uncomfortable, a little bit confusing, maybe a little contradictory. We're going to feel some of that paradox energy. But then in the middle of the week, we need to study. We need to study what we really want. We need to study what we really need. We really want to study ourselves and our path and what cycle we're in in the path and where we want to go and how we want to dedicate ourselves to what we want. Because like I said in the beginning of this reading, if we do not step in all the way to what we want, if we don't really say, okay, this is what I know is going to take me to the next level, the next level. And if I don't step into it, I'm cheating myself. If we don't have that kind of serious dedication to our goals, then we're going to miss out on some serious reward. So we need to study ourselves and notice where we're doing things halfway, where we're self-contrasting, where we're not stepping into our fullest faith or fullest alignment, where we're not making decisions to invest in ourselves and in our path in the ways that we're meant to. And we need to do the work. We need to do the work and study how to do the work so that we can do the work the best way we can and actually activate the path we're meant to activate, which ultimately comes through at the end of the week with our manifestation. We start to realize, okay, this is what I need to do to manifest what I want. This is the work. This is the thing that I am stepping into. I choose this manifestation. I choose this path. I choose to really focus, hyper-focus on what I want and what I want to create so I can see it happen right here now. Okay. So that's at the end of the week. So just a beautiful culmination of cards, tower, study and manifestation. And I'm here for you. Please know that, you know, we're all going through it. These tower moments aren't easy, but it's so nice to have someone to lean on when you're in those moments of dark nights of the soul um, or shadow work. So if you need that, and if you need more study, if you need more discipline, if you need more information, if you need more know-how on your enlightenment path, your intuitive development, stepping into your power, manifesting greatness, reach out to me. 
there's only going to be a few more weeks where I'm enrolling new clients for the 2021 year. And trust me, you want to be in this group because the group for 2020 have been doing some epic stuff in 2021. And I can guarantee you the group in 2021 is going to do some super epic stuff. Okay. So let's dive in. And for those of you who are already clients, if you're interested in the manifestation group, please let me know. I will have a special offer for you to um, get into that group at a really nice price if you're interested in it. Um, because I really want, um, you know, my current clients to also have the opportunity to dive into this new uh, group path as well, because I think there's a lot of value in the support that it can bring for all of you and the networking it can bring for all of you as well. All right. I love you so much. I will talk to you soon. Make sure to reach out to me at readingsbyrissa at gmail.com if you have any questions. Take a look at the links in this description once this video is uploaded to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one booking or for any additional messages or information on my network. And I will check ya on Sunday, the 21st. So I'm super excited to see you then. And I love you so much. Have a wonderful day. Peace. <laughs>